to see some action. Make some noise. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He officially weighed in at 125 and one quarter pounds. With a professional record of 10 wins, four by way of knockout and one loss. From Scotland, please welcome Stephen Tiff Tiffany. And introducing his opponent across the ring in the blue corner. He officially weighed in at 124 and three quarter pounds with a perfect professional record of nine wins, seven by way of knockout and no losses. From Mullingar, Ireland, please welcome the Punisher, Davy Oliver Joyce. Your referee, Justino Di Giovanni, will now give his instructions to the boxers. Okay, guys, we remember the rules. I want a clear match. Good luck at the corner. This is one of those fights where you know the guys have prepared diligently. You know they are close to 100% physically and mentally. You know also, Barry, that so much is on the line and they're going to give it absolutely everything. I think Joyce must come into this as a relatively heavy favourite. Yeah, of course. I think he goes in as a favourite. But you know, with one being 32 and the other one 30, and this is a fight where you know, they need to keep that momentum going in their careers. It's very, very important. Joyce, of course, a, a European champion as an amateur. Well, he used to spar Michael Conlon so often. He's been sparring Conlon over at uh, Adam Booth's gym once again. They've done about 50, 60 rounds in the build-up to this one. He said that was priceless. Oh, big right hand from Tiffany. He's plays counter-puncher through the first moments. And then a left hand back also there from Joyce. I think especially in, in the early part, it's going to be a little bit tit for tat. Get a little bit of give and take. It'll be interesting how Tiffany's going to go about it. How much will he box? How much will he move? Right now he's staying enough in range and that brings Joyce's power into it with seven stoppages so far in his nine wins. Yeah, but, he, but he's moving around the target though. You know, so he's, even though he's, he's not running and not moving back too much, but I don't think he wants to give away too much ground there, Tiffany. He is moving around the target, so he's not just standing right in front of Joyce and allowing him to unload. Just got to watch that. Oh, good, good jab there from Tiffany. Just got to watch that low left handle there. Tiffany comes back a little low. That's better. And so does Joyce's. It just could be that they're a mirror image of each other in opportunity there. We were speaking, Barry and I, backstage earlier on to Tiffany and his team. Spoke to Joyce yesterday as Tiffany gets through. And they were very much aware, Paul Weir was saying to him, is it very much aware that when Joyce brings back his left hand, he, he, he doesn't necessarily put it back up shoulder height or higher. So it'd be interesting to see if that can be exploited. But it's been the jab. They've both been trying to dominate with the, with the jab, with the left hand. And for me, I think Tiffany's just got the better. A good right hand there from Joyce and right one back straight away there back from Tiffany. It's been tip for tat, hasn't it? Lovely uppercut though. And again there from Tiffany. I think Tiffany's just done a little bit more through the first two minutes. But I'm sure Joyce will be thinking that as this fight goes on, his strength and power may well come into it. Although, Barry, he was a pound and a quarter inside the, the limit. He's nearly half a stone lighter than he's ever yeah. been in his professional career. People will just be wondering, how has he made the weight? Has he done it properly? Will that play a part later on? Yeah, well, it might, it might play a part on the stretch, but time will tell, I guess, you know, but he looks in good condition and, and, and he started quite fast and, and sprightly, I thought, I think, Joyce. But for me, I just think at the minute, just, just ever so slightly, but not by much. Good body shot there from Joyce. Lovely little left at the body there from, from Joyce. He switches in and amongst that. Yeah, nod from Joyce at the end of the first round. He thinks he won it. Maybe it just edged to Tiffany, but it was a, an appetizer for what's to come. Well, there's Johnny Roy in the, the corner with David Oliver Joyce giving the advice. He should, of course, be Pete Taylor. 
Yeah, yeah, Lewis in, in the okay. in the corner the other week with Luke week, Keeler in Belfast. He's having a lot less success than I thought he would have. You're in control. Keep that going, but Keeler faints before you go. Keeler faints working. Keep your head off centre. And when after you finish your combination, keep nice and tight on the way out. Okay. Johnny Roy in the, the green t-shirt helping out there, Pete Taylor, who was in the, the corner in Belfast at the Ulster Hall, that fantastic fight between Luke Keeler and Conrad Cummings, the rematch, he was in the victorious corner there just the other weekend in, in Belfast when Barry and I were ringside, he, he couldn't make the journey tonight, Pete, uh, because of that heart scare a couple of weeks uh, ago, we, we wish him a speedy recovery and hopefully he is well on his way. Well, they'll have done the work between them in the build-up to this one. Oh, that was a cracking first round for the pair off them. They, they'll both have been buoyed by it and feel confident coming into the second. We're both looking to be busy but not overstaying their welcome with the combination, if you know what I mean. No, they know that someone's got to fire back so they're not getting too greedy with any success they're having. And at this stage, when we're both fighters are very, very sharp still, it is about damage limitations. Don't know the least mistakes you make early on, the better. That was a terrific combination there from the Scotsman. Actually, one question I should have asked him yesterday when I was speaking to him, was he a Hearts or Hibs man? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the fact that he's in maroon and white tonight, Tiffany, may well suggest that, but I could be wrong. Big. Two big soccer sized football sides in Edinburgh. It's good again from Tiffany there, just getting the last little say there in our little exchange. It's really classy oh. technical stuff from the pair of them. A big right hand got through from Joyce, but then one back from Tiffany. Uh, was he Joyce just off balance? He might have caught him a little bit on the. On as he was swinging himself, but the first right hand from, from Joyce was a beautiful shot. And I suppose you do wonder, I think the, the prevailing thinking was that the, the power edge was with Joyce, Tiffany with four stoppages in his, his ten wins. The feeling is that Joyce slightly the bigger puncher, maybe the stronger, but they're in close. Is that going to play to his strengths? You would think so, if you can get those hooks and uppercuts into play. Tiffany Jab working well. <laughs> Good right hand there from Tiffany. Oh, yeah, terrific. Paid back straight away though by Joyce. Good body shot there from Joyce. This has been fought at a high pace and intensity, but it's technical stuff. I'm not sure if there's a little cut of the right eye there. Of, there is, of a nasty one. It's uh, Tiffany, right eye. And while the, this round has been close again, you just fancy, I think, that, yeah, there's a, definitely a cut for, for Tiffany. Maybe Joyce is marked up too. Nasty little slash on the eyelid. Nasty little slash on the right it, eyelid of Tiffany. It is, but I, I got a feeling that Joyce's might be a little bit worse. I'm not is quite it sure. on the eyebrow, on the yeah. right eye? That could be anything more punchy, but the heads, because the heads are coming close in as well when they're, when they're together. Now there's Terry McCormick's on the right. Uh, that's uh, in the glasses, Paul Weir. It's very much a Scottish corner. Eric Brown's in there as well. Here's the Irish corner. One round each. What I'd like you to do, sometimes, if you're going to throw from long range, fall in on your shot, just to smother his counter, okay? Well, it was fairly close, they were just a respectful distance, but that was fought at close quarters, the pair of them, you saw that slashing right hand from Tiffany getting through. It was, it was just Joyce just... Here we go into the third round, interesting you heard there in the uh, Joyce corner, Johnny Roy, who's a acting as, as trainer and coach in there tonight. He said one round each, and that, that's, how, that's how I saw it. Just, it's tight though. Yeah, it is tight, and, you know, and, and, and tight rounds like that, you could have two for just the one fight as well, couldn't you? And 
I just think it's um, it's just oh, it's good there. Good work. It's just tiffing sometimes, maybe starting or having them good, good success in the middle part of the rounds. And Joyce finishing the stronger the last in the first two, but yeah, it could could be close. I think the important thing for both of them and their corners too is that there's no reaction and tactics to the the cut. So in Belfast last weekend that Conrad Cummings really had to change his game plan in the third round when he had a, a nasty cut and that sort of, to an extent, changed the, the tactical complexion of the fight. But so far, this, this pair looked like they're sticking to the plan. And the styles are gelling nicely. Oh, that's good there from Joyce there. Just a little lazy jab there from, from Tiffany and he comes back with a nice fast combination. Oh, body shot there. Was it a bit low? Referee yeah, says yes. Yeah, good, good shot by the ref. I mean, I think that the shorts of Tiffany are just slipping down below the body protector. He really has whipped, whipped himself into to shape. He says he's been, um, as well as doing the rounds in the lock end boxing gym, he's been, he's been running up and round Arthur's seat, which is the, the big hill right in the centre of Edinburgh, the extinct volcano. Nice right hand there from Joyce in our little exchange again. Just needs to just slide that front foot a little bit closer, Joyce. No blood, it seems, from the, the Tiffany eye. They've done a good job getting the solution on that. Oh, what a whipping up a cut there from, from Tiffany. This is shaping up nicely. This is a fantastic little match. Lots of quality up close from the pair off them. I thought Tiffany would want to keep it just a little bit longer with the jab. Good. Weary of punches there from Joyce. You can hear both corners say good work. But they're both having good quality little, little exchanges here, aren't they? Again, there, Joyce coming forward with straight shots, and then Tiffany just under a bit of pressure, but sneaking in that lovely little left uppercut. And it seems round two, and, and again in round three, uh, it's a bit busier from Joyce than it was in the first round, where he may have just lost it on that alone. A, he's busier, and it looks like Joyce is trying to have the last word as well, Barry. Yeah. Gotta start using that jab more here, Tiffany, just to keep, to keep Joyce from walking too close to the target and let his hands go. And now it's Joyce who's marching forward. It may be Joyce at his best round so far, and he's just forcing the fight now and forcing Tiffany to retreat. He's getting tired. He's looking like you're hurting him now. Keep that pressure on for another round. Break his heart. Keep that pressure on. Break his heart, the phrase there used by Johnny Roy in the corner of uh, Joyce, who was much busier. He was looking strong in that round. Yeah, but still, even though he's the guy with the formal momentum, he's still picking his shots well. He's not just bowling forward with, 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 with aimless work and work rate. He's picking his shots coming forward. Little low, little low punch from him there, but for the most part, I thought just the aggression there of, of Joyce was enough to, to swing that round in his favour. Move up, you throw your Use your boxing skills, son, said Terry McCormack in the, the corner, part of the lock end boxing gym in Edinburgh team. And of course, Terry, who was uh, part of Alex Arthur's journey towards a, a world title. Barry, same world title you held. It was. Good fight at Alex in his day as well. Huge for the weight. Probably should have been a lightweight all yeah, through his career, probably really. Be better off and more successful because of that. Oh, huge body shot there from Joyce. And again, this is a, a, a determined ploy, it seems, from the Irishman. Quite a few of his, his friends and family from Mullingar, County Westmeath, have, have made the journey over for this. Now this is where Tiffany got to use that jab and a little bit of footwork, a little bit of guile in, in, his, in his movements, just to, just to stop this little bit of rhythm that, that Joyce is starting to get into his work. Well, I was surprised at the tactics of Tiffany through the first two rounds. I've got to admit, I didn't expect him to be holding his feet as much but as he, he did. But he was having success, even though he was getting caught as well, but he was having success as well with that. So you can see why he sort of stuck to that, stuck to that because he was thinking I was landing good shots. His dad, uh, Peter, brother Jerry, and his, his wife, Amy, they've all made the journey from Scotland to support Tiffany here. And his gym mate, Lewis Benson, who we've seen a, a few times on 
the MTK shows, maybe ESPN Plus viewers will get a chance to, to see the Edinburgh man box in the coming months. That's sort of sharp there, took just a second to go there from, from Tiffany. But still Joyce, you tend to think has a little bit more momentum coming forward with his work. I think he's found his rhythm, Joyce. Yeah, but he's still not having it all his own way. And Tiffany's having some good shots, but I think Tiffany just needs to get a bit more space and work behind that jab and use that footwork. And not to run, but just to move around the tag like he, little bit he did in the first round. Now he's trying to plant his feet and work with Joyce, and I'm not sure if that's the right tactic. Oh, good strong right hand, that from Joyce as well, inside the final minute of round four. And also, Tiffany, Tiffany's used a feint as well, because Joyce doesn't really move his head too much. So, you know, a little feint. And you'll, you'll, hopefully you'll catch it for Tiffany's sake, you'll catch him in no man's land and then you'll be flurry. Well, if, if Tiffany does revert to boxing, it, uh, I think it's fair to say Joyce is prepared for that. He's been sparring Michael Conlon in the, the build-up and Conlon switch hitting and elusive. That would have been perfect preparation for a, a mover. I asked him what, what did he get out of, of that and he, he said it was just great to see him and Adam Booth working up close. He had a bit of time in the, with Booth in his corner as well for some of those spars giving him advice. But just the communication, he said, was so impressive between trainer and boxer. And that, was one of the big things he took out of it. And of course, that's something he's slightly missing tonight, of course, with Pete Taylor not in the corner for him. Another good round there, Joyce, it is, who beats his chest as he goes back to his corner. He could be in front by a couple. Well, finding his feet, finding his rhythm, and Finding his shots maybe a little low with that yeah, body was shot low, but again, Joyce, but he, he's but been getting his shots off for the last two rounds. He's the one with the easier rhythm, isn't he? He's the one who's got that forward momentum. He's coming forward, then his punches go with, without really loading up. And, and Tiffany's having a bit of success, but he's sort of fighting, reactive. We need to get that, establish some sort of foothold with that jab and be sort of more proactive route, and then Joyce chase the fight a bit. Fantastic ringside seating here at the Emirates Golf Club in Dubai. And our co cool feature between David Oliver Joyce in the green and Edinburgh Stephen Tiffany. Tiffany seemed to edge the first round. Slowly, Joyce, a bit like a, a steam engine, has been picking up a bit of energy and timing, and he's starting to roll forward now. It's good work there from Joyce, and that's a problem. It's hard to break a rhythm of a fighter. It's hard to break the rhythm you're in, even if it's a bad rhythm. So, you know, do it early in the fight. For Tiffany, he's got a. He's, I think he's, he sort of started off in the wrong. You know, you have a success. He was earlier on. He started off in the wrong sort of pattern. And then we need to break that, and, and like his corner was saying, use your boxing skills, use, get behind your jab. Echoing what, people, what we were saying in the previous round, Alex. Do you know the impressive thing, though, for Joyce, is he's earning his way in yeah. to getting his shots off. It's actually quite calculated, clever pressure from him. But he doesn't move his head, Joyce, too much, and I think that's something that Tiffany's not really capitalising on. You know, that he needs to throw plenty of feints, and again, move, just move around the tag a little bit more, like he was, just you know, take a little step, you know, move, use that back foot to move around to your left, just push off with it, throw the jab, and move around, just keep moving around that little semicircle around the body. Well, he, he was just circling all through the first round, wasn't he? Even though he was in yeah. range. And didn't take a backward step, yeah, of course, and still had success. Now he's back to that, and he's having a little bit of success with a jab, Tiffany. Oh, it's good from Joyce there, first time he moved his head. Little, Little slipping back and forth and slip the slip the left hand through a right hand over the top. A minute to go then in this fifth, we're already at halfway. That's flown by, hasn't it? It's been an excellent pace. And it's good to see that the cuts we saw in round three haven't played a part for either man oh, as beautiful. Joyce gets through. Do you know what was good about that? Forget about the punch. The two little feints before he threw the jab. Set it up with the first feint, 
No, and, and Tiffany didn't go for the second free. They just made Tiffany sort of tense a little bit. Then the jab comes in. Clever. Oh, that was nice from Tiffany. Oh, good right hand as well there from Joyce. He's looking stronger as this one goes on, Joyce, and that was half how you expected him to go about it. Needs to get some success here now, Tiffany, just to break the rhythm there to Joyce. He had a little, didn't he? But just little cameos in this round. Cuts a little bit worse there, though, with David Oliver Joyce there, blood dribbling down the face. In that corner of the right eye. At least it's outside the cheekbone. And they may have a chance. It'll be Andy O'Neill and the Cutsman in that corner. We'll get a chance to work on it now. Our co-feature has gone past halfway, and here comes the main man, Alu Bamideli La Sisi. It is warming up backstage, and he's on a, a run of form, a dozen wins, plenty of stoppages along the way as well. He stopped six of his last eight, actually, albeit at a lower level, and he's got a vacant WBC international title fight uh, tonight. That's our feature over 12 rounds in the super flyweight division, which uh, there's no doubt that's been... Uh, enjoying a bit of a resurgence stateside in the last year or so. Into round six here in Dubai. Dubai uncovered on ESPN Plus and IFL TV. Alex Steedman and Barry Jones enjoying bringing you the fights tonight from the Emirates. Well, I must admit, by the first round, Barry is sort of tight and competitive as the first few rounds were. I gave the first to Tiffany. I, I think it's been all joy since. Yeah, I think the second round was very close. It could have gone either way. I think, but the last three of certainly, certainly the last round was was a clear Joyce round because again we say talk about that rhythm and, and, and getting a foothold in the fight so very important early on doors and he's had that and that formal momentum Tiffany had been able to break it because he I think he just thought the wrong he's you know he's having success he thought the wrong tactics from the offset and forgot his boxing and tried to dig it out with with Joyce and you know he, again he knew he was he was happy he was landing some good shots that's not the pattern he needed to, needed to, to, to forge earlier on he needed to use the jab and use that later on when he's starting to get a little bit tired to dig in. Tiffany has a little look across to his corner for some advice. We just wondered about the, we, we tend to respect the energy and the strength of, of Joyce. I think it's fair to say both as an amateur and early on as a, as a, as a pro, but he's unbeaten in, in nine. He's going to the body, a terrific left hand got through to the midsection there of Tiffany, but he was a pound and a quarter inside the limit, nearly half a stone lighter than he has been as a pro any time at all. It could just be, Barry, that with a title on the line, he's he's just at his right weight for the first time. Of course, yeah, miscalculation. Doesn't always mean another strong oh, good shot there from, from Joyce. Left hook to the body, right hand through the guard. And Tiffany's just waiting too long to, to let that jab go, let the punches go. Just, just, oh. just, just, just two, a second or two too long and, and Joyce gets too close to him. And Tiffany maybe needs a change in the play, a plan B here. It's a really good start from him. Oh, that's great work there from Joyce. Really mixing it up a little bit of weight, then little fast flurries of not much behind them, but they're irritating punches. And on what they do there, they keep you occupied while he's setting it up. He's taking a rest or setting you up for a for a bigger attack. Oh, fantastic couple of shots getting through. He bundled him over there. I don't think that was a knockdown. Let's see. No push. The referee, but he did land about three or four hooks in and amongst that. It wasn't a knockdown, but all of a sudden, Joyce just stood still, didn't he? Just before that, like he was. I don't know if he was hurt. Fantastic little flurry there at the end of the round for Tiffany. Just the, the sort of little breakthrough that he needed. Was it enough though on the cards?
great little flurry at the end of the, the round, Barry, from, from Tiffany. Was it too little, too late? I think so. I still think Joyce did enough for the round, the winner, to me, to be honest. He dominated three quarters of the round. I've got to say one thing, that I was not getting any better for Joyce at all. It was a weird thing. It was, it was an uppercut, I think, then, to call Joyce. That's what it was. When he came in the uppercut, caught him again with the hook. And even though he bundled him over, it was an uppercut just before the succeed. But there, he got caught with the hook there again. And he just sort of stood still, like froze for a moment. You'll see it now. It's there, that uppercut, that uppercut there, I think that stunned him. And then a hook over the top there. And then he just bundled him over. I think he was a little bit in trouble there, Joyce. Nice tight guard. Maybe some hope for Tiffany with that little flurry. Maybe that sort of injection of accuracy and pace has given him a, a template to work from now in the closing rounds down the stretch here in the seventh. <laughs> nice right hand from Tiffany. <laughs> How would you describe the style of Joyce? But, but I think he's, in a, in, well, he's in an aggressive fight, but he's with a little bit of guile. He's just, just pour forward like a lunatic. I would say he's an aggressive counter puncher, but in this fight, he's led mainly. Because usually he likes, you know, he likes to just slide that front foot in and force you to make a mistake and then counters you quite effectively. But Tiffany's just waiting a little bit too long, so Joyce is taking the lead. And he's been leading off first, and, and, and it's going to be very difficult now for Tiffany to bring him up his rhythm unless he can hurt him, like I, like I suspected in that last round. But it's been a good first minute to this round for Tiffany. He's got through with a few of those left hooks. The left really working for him. Heads clashing there a little bit. As Joyce come forward. Got to start bringing those. When, when, Tiff, when Joyce gets close, and Tiffany got to start bringing those uppercuts into play. As strong as he, he, he looks, Joyce, what we know about the top-level guys in this division, Barry, is that quite a few of them can, can bang. Of course, this yeah. is a, a sort of, uh, this is a ranking fight for the WBO. Oscar Valdez, of, of course, is, uh, has come back from that uh, nasty jaw injury that he, he had uh, in that fantastic fight against Scott Quigg. You've got Warrington. Kid Galahad's coming up, Warrington, an amazing fight that you and I saw from yep. close up ringside just before Christmas against Carl Frampton, who's looking to get back into the mix as well. Leo Santa Cruz, Gary Russell Jr. still there or thereabouts. Gary Russell Jr., fantastic fight though, when he fights. Yeah. But what a talent. Oh, so it's a fantastic. You literally got like the, the top 12 fighters in the world, which is very good. I think a three, or three or four stand alone, but, the, but then the others there are a real close chasing pack. Oh, good. A couple of big shots getting through. Oh, huge right hand. There was a, a combination and then he just throws Tiffany. He looks like he knows where he is. There's 30 seconds to go. But Joyce is going to jump on him. That's a weenie looking fighter. A couple of right hands could be in a bit of trouble here. Tiffany. His hands are coming down. He's tired as he basically wears back with the left hand of his own. He might have bought himself a few seconds here. Joyce, right, look at Joyce, right arm though. And not rushing, Joyce looking to pick oh, the shots. Catches, left up. catches him again right at the end of the round. He's in a bit of trouble here. I think the bell might just about save him, Tiffany. The referee's having a look. Another right hand. Where's the bell? Finally it goes. That was the longest 10 seconds of Tiffany's life and it's enough to persuade the referee to stop the fight at the end of uh, what was a pretty tough round, it's fair to say, for the Scotsman. And that cues wild Irish celebrations. Great finish there from Joyce, really was. I've got to say, I didn't. I, I was still urging the referee to, to step, you know, step in. Now he's not fighting back, not fighting back. And I thought the referee was trying to wait for the bell to ring. But he obviously stopped it. I think rightly so stopped in the end. What happened there? You've seen a fighter get into his rhythm quite early. And even though Tiffany was having some success, he was fighting the wrong fight. And once you get a fight in a rhythm, and Joyce got it there, the nice smooth rhythm, then his hands go, being allowed to go get too close to the target. Tiffany couldn't stop him. It was a great finish there from Joyce. He didn't rush his work. And just, as, and just as I've been painting some perspective 
at a world level, which is, is where he gets himself a ranking point to head towards now, Joyce. Just as I've been painting a perspective, but in some context with all of those big name guys who can punch uh, yep. and who can fight at the top level. Uh, and we're saying just maybe, well, maybe he, so far, Joyce, isn't that suddenly he increased at the tempo and the combinations? There's nothing wrong with that finish. There's a, there's a load of punches, very few missed, though, and, and he didn't didn't rush his work and just throw like at the end he just, he just threw a big flurry. You know the referee's going to step in, but the combination before that it was all thoughtful work. I thought it was a really good performance against a good kid. Tiffany's a good kid, and Joyce I thought it was a really good performance, really good, very you know busy, busy throughout. He knew it this way. He wanted to make a statement. He, I think he did. Listen now, those guys at the top ten in the world, they're, they're a different league right now. But he's shown at 32 years of age. He'll take the risk. If he gets the opportunity, he'll, he'll have to take that risk because time is not on his side. But what he's shown is he has a good engine. He has a good work rate, you know, as we've seen, and packs a good shot, picks his punches well. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, except for the cuts and stuff, you know, I think it was a, a pretty good performance there. And the way these particular belts work is that gets him into the top 15 with the WBO for Oscar Valdez's belt. So he's just a little hop, skip and a jump away from a potential challenge. And also, you know, he's 32, he's not away too long, but you think... You know what boxing like? Within 12 months, the landscape can go from being the best division in the world to in a transitional period, if people move up and retire, all of a sudden, the titles that are vacant, titles that are up for gaps against people who are less experienced or at your sort of level. So, you know, it's, it, you get in the right fights now, you keep getting to the end of the year, see how he gets on. European level could be calling, possibly, you know, or another a ranking to get him in the top 10, top 8 in the world if he can for the WBO. That's the title he wants to target for now, you would suggest. But you know, this is still Cal Frampton, Eddie. There's rumours that he might be boxing Oscar Valdez sometime soon this year. And you know, it's a division where there's no easy route, that's for sure. I tell you what, I don't envy who it is who's going to try and pick fighter of the night tonight. <laughs> You've Zwarov round one, almost a two punch stoppage. Zarbek right hook. You've had Majidal Nakbi as well. The, the Emirati KO stoppage on his, his debut. And now Joyce, round seven stoppage to move himself a little closer to world level. Let's get confirmation of it now with Terry. Ladies and gentlemen, we have WBO representative Istvan Kovacs to present the belt. Referee Justino Dejavin Alvani called a stop to this bout at 2 minutes and 59 seconds of round number 7, declaring your winner by TKO. He is the new WBO European featherweight champion, Davy Oliver Joyce. And great to see that respect between the, the two fighters and the, the two and corners as well. Congratulations there from the Scots to the Irishman, David Oliver Joyce, who's at the leanest that he's ever been as a as a pro. I'll tell you what, Tiffany's still a little bit unsteady. Oh, a little bit unsteady on his legs. And, and here's why, because it was a sudden flurry of punches and shots at Barry that this was the end. Give us some, give us some context and an appraisal of the performance. Well, I think, I think, you know, the, the pressure, you can't underestimate being put under pressure early on in a fight. Even though you're fighting back and you're competitive, that pressure that Joyce puts on the front foot, it makes you, you punch when you don't want to punch. So your breathing's not right, you're getting tired quicker all of a sudden. I think it was a great performance. And we'll hear from David Joyce, Oliver Joyce here, but he's with our own Alex Steedman. David Oliver Joyce has just produced, perhaps as a pro, the performance of your career. Tell us how you did it. Yeah, it was an unbelievable performance. First of all, I want to thank MTK for having me out in this unbelievable part of the world to have a European title defence or a European title fight. I really appreciate it, guys. And in front of all the Dubai people, thank you very much. You were the lightest you've been as a pro. I think you were the most motivated. I spoke to you yesterday and you were confident without being over uh, confident. What was it about your preparation and the way you've been going about the job in the gym that made you think that you were going to produce that performance tonight? For the past 14 weeks, I've lived like a professional. First time ever. Even as an amateur or a professional, I've lived like a professional. And I've had the right meals, the right amount of training, right amount of sleep. And I have to give credit to my nutritionist, Blueberry nutritionist, that has me in this fantastic shape. I was 59 kilos five weeks ago. When I was sparring Michael Connell and I was 59, week, 59 kilos. So I've made weight as it is. So that's why I was so confident getting in here tonight because I knew I was on the weight. I wasn't doing water loads or anything like that. Everything was perfect. And I was feel, that's why I was so confident 
Get in there tonight. And so I, I suppose what you're saying then is this is the kind of David Oliver Joyce we can expect going forward. I think you'd also probably agree that when you look at the guys in your division and you, you're a step closer to Oscar Valdez who holds the main belt in this, you've of course got Warrington and Galahad and Frampton and Santa Cruz and Gary Russell Jr. and all those guys. There's a load of talent. How can you get yourself there and bridge the gap to what's going to be required? Look, a lot of people see where my pedigree is tonight. You know, I, I can mix it with the best. You know, I've boxed uh, Valdez in the World Championships in Milan. 2009, so I've mixed it with him, I've mixed it with Frampton, I've mixed it with them all, you know, and they all know I can mix it with them, with the top level boxers in my division of featherweight. Featherweight is my division right now. I went lightweight, I went super feather, wasn't me, you know, tonight I felt strong. And to all the featherweights out there, you know, like in Ireland and in England, Davy Oliver's in town. <laughs> David Oliver is in town. Excellent performance, well done. Thank you very much. Big, big uh, thank you to everybody from the boy having this fantastic show in, in an unbelievable part of the world. Thank you very much. Well done, David Oliver uh, Joyce. That's the co-feature. Cool Not bad for, uh, as an order for the main dish that is coming up next.